Hi guys. So I thought it would, today it would be a good idea if we did kind of a summary of, of everything we've got going on here. Um, in the past I've done a little bit of a comparison uh, between the Unix operating system directory structure and a Windows directory structure. Uh, and, I, and I related that to the browser URL. I think I'll cover that again and we'll look through uh, the complete directory structure as of where we are at this moment. Um, and see, uh, we're just gonna, it's just kind of a summary and make sure everybody kind of feels comfortable uh, with everything that we've been doing. So I'll start this off by looking, I've reproduced uh, the whole directory structure that we're looking at on Copeland uh, on my Windows machine. And I had it there before, but it, now, you know, I did it again. So it's it kind of, it's up to date with where we are. So we'll take a look at that and relate what we have there and then we'll look back on PuTTY and we'll see the comparison between Windows and PuTTY and then we'll, we're going to look at the site as well and, and, and kind of watch the URL and see how that operates in the site and then add in also the uh, a little bit more discussion about the the anchor element and how that fits into the whole thing because they're all related right all of these things are related so let's jump right to the directory structure, you can't see the mouse, but at least you can see the highlighting uh, on this. So here I, I have reproduced everything. I'm gonna make it a little bigger so for sure you can see it. Let's move this to a better place and make it a little bigger. Okay, so this is my Windows machine, right? So we know that it's a Windows machine because this is starting off with C and it looks like a Windows machine. So what I've done on my Windows machine is I created a folder that looks just like my home directory on the Unix machine, right? It has the 06127 as the home directory. And I've clicked that. So we know that 06127 is my PWD. And since I clicked it here in Windows, um, it's showing me the contents. That's an LS, right? So I see that there's a mail, public underscore HTML folders, in Windows, we call them directories. And I've created a new file here called HTML template.html. I'll show you what that's about in a moment, I think, on this video or, or not. It's It just contains the, here, maybe I can show you real quick. Uh, let me come over here. That's gonna slow me up a little, but I think you're gonna wanna know. Well, I don't think actually I have it open on this right now. Oh, I do, yeah. Okay, so here, we'll do this. It looks like this. The contents of that file look like this. So it just contains uh, that those core HTML elements that I had mentioned that every page should have, the HTML head, body, and title. And I've already built the structure for them, right? By the way, uh, if you want to put comments in your code, uh, these are comments are things that are, are going to be read by humans only. So the browser won't render this, the browser won't show it on your web page, even though it's in the body here, right? There's my body element. Um, and so it's contained in the body element, but it's it won't be visible to viewers of the web page only people who look at the code. So you can write notes to yourself or to someone else in here. We started off with that, the angle bracket, exclamation, dash, dash. This is the comment. And then you, you close the comment with the dash, dash, greater than, angle bracket. Okay, so I'm gonna use this page. Every time I wanna make a, another page for my website, I'll just copy this page so I don't have to type head, uh, HTML head, title, body, every single time, since I know every page needs this. All right, so let's, um, let's come back to what we were doing here, which was my, Windows machine, that's what we're doing. All right, let's get that out of the way. Here's my Windows machine, right here. All 
Okay, so mail, public HTML are in my home directory, right? Public underscore HTML is our web root. So we can think of this as kind of like our, our workspace. Anything that we put outside of there will not be read by the browser or by the, by the it will not be served by uh, Apache, the web server. So I, I did put the HTML template outside of the uh, Apache's area where it will go. So now I need to know what's in that folder. So in Unix or on Copeland, I would CD into the folder and then I would do an LS so I could see the contents. In Windows, I'll double click it. All right, so inside of here is my index.html. Now on a Windows machine, since we have icons, because of the extension .html, Windows knows that that file should be opened by a web browser. And I have Chrome set as my default web browser, so um, well, I see a Chrome icon there. I also have two folders inside of public underscore HTML. You'll likely have only one unless you've been in both classes. If you're in Sys101, you should have a Sys101 directory. If you're in Sys103, you should have a Sys103 directory. Right? So we have three things inside of public HTML here. Right? Let's jump into Sys101. So I CD'd into it and I did an LS. I've got my Sys101 HTML. Right, .html lets the browser know that there's HTML in this file that it needs to render. So our files that we create, we, we, we need this .html on all those files. And here's a directory, a new directory that I created just now. We haven't done any class yet, but we're going to need it. One called labs, or lab1. And so it's, it's right in my sys101 directory. So I intend on putting lab one directory, lab two directory, lab three. So each time we do another project as we move forward or another element that's gonna be submitted, um, we'll add it to the labs directory. This sys101.html will act as kind of an index into the contents of all the lab directories. So if we continue with this lab one naming structure, I would then, once we do something in lab one, then I'll have something in lab two. I'll have a lab two directory with something in it, and a lab three. And then on my sys101 HTML, I'll want an in, a link to each one of those files that are contained inside those directories. <laughs> All right, so that's the general idea of what we're doing. So now I want to, I want to go back and, and take a peek in the sys103 directory but I'm unable to double click. I, I got no, I've got nothing I can do here. Apparently, I'm dead in the water, stuck. I need to say something like, go back or go up, go up a folder. And in Windows, I would do it like this. Right? That's CD space dot dot. Go back up to the folder that contains the one I'm in. Here's Sys103. Now, if I click this, I can, once again, I can't see public HTML. So when I want to go back up to public HTML, I'm going to have to do something different. Whether it's Windows, Mac, Chromebook, it doesn't matter. I, I'm not going to, once I double click that, I cannot, the contents, the parent directory is not a content or one of the contents of a child directory. So public HTML is the parent. When I click 103, public HTML will not be in that folder, right? Public HTML, sys103 is in this folder, not the other way around. Now I don't want to create, also don't want to create folders with .html on them, right? It doesn't, these are files that I want to open up with you in the browser. This is a folder that I want to contain files in. So this is, you think of this as a container, directories are. Files are something different. These two things are very different. All right, so quick summary. There's my home directory. There's our public HTML inside of there. I have, I have two directories. You'll probably have one and my index.html. So it's 
at the top level of the web root, public underscore HTML. So then we'll come inside of the appropriate Sys101 directory, and you should have Sys101 HTML, or if you're in the other directory, Sys103, you'll have Sys103.html. Okay, that's the directory structure in Windows. Let's take a peek at it in Unix or on PuTTY. There's my PuTTY. Oh, here it is. Okay, so there we are. PWD. Oh, click the thing. PWD. We're in my home directory. Same as. Something's not, just not showing up for some reason. Hold on one second. It's going there, but not here. I swear we'll get it. Oh, there we go. All right, good. There we go. So, we're in my home directory. What's in there? LS. Let me do this here. LS. There's my Sys 101. Thought I had a Sys 101 here. Oh, I, I, I know why. This, this is something different. I don't have a mail directory. I think we've mentioned that earlier. Uh, in my, uh, let's do the PWD so you know where we are. I'm in my home directory. I'm looking at the contents. I should have public underscore HTML. You have mail also. And then we should both have. Oh, that's it. Uh, what I had was that template, HTML template. Here it is in my Windows machine. So I'll show you again over there. I've got too many windows open. Okay, let's look. Here we go. Public HTML. No, oh, home directory is where we are. Home directory should have mail, public HTML, and I put that template in there. Um, you can create a template as well if you want to do, work. use it the same way I do. We're not going to ever link to this. See, because it's outside of public HTML. So it's not something we'll ever use. So I go into public HTML and I see these two directories and, and my index, my main home page, right? So I go into public underscore HTML, CD, E-U-B-L-I-C underscore HTML. Right, and then I do an LS to see the contents, and there we see the two folders. This one, that's this one hundred three. This one, and this one hundred one is there on mine. Right, you have the appropriate one for your class, and there's my index.html. So it's the same thing, right? So again, I'll just mention that we can't tell that Sys101 and Sys103 here are directories just by looking at the names. So I have a naming convention that I use. My I make sure my first letter is capital if um, the name that I've created is a directory. That way I don't have to do ls negative l. But I, I, you know, not that it's that big of a deal or anything. There's 101 and 103 right here. These two are, and you see the D on both of them. So we know the directories. These other things like index.html is not a directory. It's not a folder. Okay. So let's CD into CISC 101 and do an LS to see what's in there. There's that Sys 101 
HTML, and there's that lab one directory, right? Back to the Windows machine. Okay, is it showing? Yeah, okay. So I entered the Sys 101, and we see lab one and this is 101 HTML. All right, so hopefully that's all. Yours should look similar. Now it's okay if, if maybe you have sys 101 index.html. You do need the .html. Frankly, I think maybe sys 101 index is a better name than just sys 101 because we are gonna use it kind of as an index. So it does seem appropriate to, to, to make it an index of some sort because that's what we're doing with it. All right, so I'm gonna open up this index.html file. So I'm gonna to go to my browser here. Put this down. I think we're done with the Windows stuff. So I'm gonna hit my browser. And that's what I have. Let's drop this out of the way. That's my homepage. All right, so I'm going to click Sys 101 the way it should operate. Oh, I lost my browser. The way the thing should operate is when I click Sys 101, I get my Sys 101 index page, right? And then I have to go back to my my main page. I don't want to. On my case, since I have two, Sys103, and I go to my Sys103 index page, and then I want to get back home, right? Okay, that's the that's the idea of how we want to get this to work. So let's go to let's look at the contents. Oh, here's what's going to be interesting. This is what I wanted to show you. Here's my home page. So this is my index.html, and if you look at the browser URL. You see that's my index.html. If I click on the Sys 101 index, you'll see that that's my that's my home web root right there, right? There's a folder called Sys 101, and in that folder is this file called Sys101.html. Now, if I misspell anything along the way here, think of these as directions. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna, I'll talk about directions in a minute. So we'll go back to my home page and you see my, my, my URL again. So I can tell if I'm, if I'm going to the right places here. Well, what will happen is if it's not going to the right place, is I'm gonna get a page not found, right? And one thing that could cause me to get a page not found is if, for instance, if I had this written cap, if my file name in the directory structure was capital CISC 103.html and the link that I created was lowercase CISC 103.html, then it's not going to work, right? Because they're different, it's case sensitive. So um, we'll look at, we'll take a peek at, so we see how this all directory structure works, right? So here's another trick you can do and from your web browser. You can right click if you're using Chrome. You can do it with all the browsers. You just gotta find another way to do it. I mean, a, a, it won't be the exact same um, option here, but it'll be something similar. So I'm doing view page source. And so I get a copy. I don't know what all of that is. I don't know why that's in there. Oh, that JavaScript. I, I don't. Uh, I didn't put that in there. In fact, I can prove it by opening up the page. But in any case, I'll do that in a second. What I really wanted to show you here was what my two links, right? So my anchors for those two. Let's make sure that's showing. Yeah. Disregard this stuff up here. So I have a link that goes to Sys 101 index called, that's the text, right? I can put any text I want in there. 
That's for a human to read. I could put in there, take my butt to Sys 101, please. I put anything I want in there. That's what's going to show up on the page and, and have the blue line under it so that when I put my mouse over like that, I, I get the blue line lights up and, and my, my cursor turns into like it does on uh, Windows, it turns into a finger, right? So that's the text that's going to be visible to the person viewing the web page, okay? <coughs> the href, href equals and in quotes, right? There's a closing quote, you don't want to skip. You're writing in here the directions for the browser. You tell the browser how to get to this file sys101.html so you're and it's from its current location just like if I was sending you to the sub shop somewhere in Wilmington I would give you directions from where you currently are it would do you no good for me to give you directions from somewhere else right so this page is lives in public underscore HTML. So the directions from public underscore HTML to the page I want to open, Sys101 HTML, this reads, go into the, from where you are right now, there is a directory named CISC101. Go into that directory, and inside of that directory is a file called Sys101.html. That's what we want, All right? And so that's different. I put two links hoping that showing you two different um, addresses would, would, would help you kind of see. In this case, I want to go to the sys103.html. Well, that's in a different location, right? That sys103.html file that I created is in another directory that's in public HTML called sys103. So I could have you know as many directories as I want in there and as many files as I want. I just have to be sure that when I give instructions to the file, that they're accurate. And by accurate, I mean, if I called the file that I created, capital C, capital I, capital S, capital C, 101.html, and I wrote in here for my anchor, lowercase sys, it will not work. If I wrote in here CISC1011 accidentally, but the file in the directory structure is called, that I created with Pico, is called CISC101.html, it will not work. This name and this name of this directory, both, both names here, have to match precisely without any errors whatsoever no matter how small you think the error is it's enough to break it nothing will work if you miss one single character or change the case on any single character it will not work okay so there's my two links you'll have one or the other of these and you're it's okay if your names are different than mine here it's just that you're <laughs> You need to be consistent in your own website. If you change this name, make sure of the file, make sure that the directions change to match the name of the file, right? Okay, so that was done. Uh, where is that, right here? I just closed that down. So I'm back on my homepage. So those are the two links. Now, they're right next to each other. We'll try to fix that in a little bit. All right, so let's click one so I get another index. And now let's look at let's look at this anchor, right? Because this is going to point back to to my this is my sys101 index. This link should point back to my index.html. And we're going to look at the Windows machine real quick here while we're just before we start going into that. Okay. Um, let me get it up. There we go. All right, so I'm inside of here, right? Now, from this link, I'm going to put a link on this page. So, in that anchor, that link, the href, 
needs to include the instructions for the browser to find the page from this page. In other words, how do I get to the other page, the one you want to open, from this location? That location is a folder called Sys101. I need to say, you got to back up, come up out of this folder that you're in, Sys101, and go to the parent. And there's index.html. So I need to say, go up one, and then open index.html. Okay, in my instructions, my directions, really it is. All right, we'll go back to the browser here. And I'll just do page source right here. All right, I'm only looking at the body. We're, we're ignoring this JavaScript. I don't know how it got there. I'm, I'm about to check it. I don't even know why it's there. It, it feels like it's something the browser threw in there or something. All right, there's my comment I happen to have inside the body. There's my header for the index. A, href, here come the instructions. Go up one, dot, dot. Just like in Unix, in, in, when we're logged into Copeland, well, we want to go to the parent directory. We want to go up one. We say cd space dot dot. In this case, in the browser, the browser knows what dot dot means. That's how you tell it. Go to the parent of the PWD. Go up one. And there's a file called index.html. And it needs to be spelled precisely like that. Okay. So that is that. Oh, there's one thing I, I've never showed you guys. We keep doing, we're, we're doing it. It's this um, this title element. Maybe you've noticed it already. What it does. So I have a title called Sys101 Index here, and it does something. And I never showed you what it does. That is the that is something else. Where it reads Sys101 Index, that is this it's not the title so if i it just so happens that the title and the index i wrote them the same if i changed them you'd see they're different if i changed one of them to something else you would see they're different but you don't know where this one's being displayed yet and i don't know that you'll be able to see it in my browser let's let's see if you would be able to um Why did I lose the page? Oh, here it is. All right, there's the page. So where is that Sys101 index? Yeah, you can't see it. It's not showing up on the... Well, I'll just tell you, and then you can look at it. It's the name of the tag, uh, the tab. So you, if you if you mouse over it, you'll see a context box pops up. And my context bo box, it reads Sys101 index. So when you mouse over these things, all of them, they have a name, all your tags do. So you can remember kind of when you have a million tags, uh, tabs open like I do, then you can kind of see which one's which. So title, the browser places it into the name of the um, the tab and you probably can read a little bit of it on the tab itself if you don't have a lot of tabs open but if you mouse over you'll see you'll see what the title of the page is okay and so do i have something else to mention i think i've uh, we looked at the brow we looked at the um the browser how it, yeah the index so we see that this matches exactly, right? So the anchor, the location on the Unix machine, and the URL will all match when things are right. And all names will be the same. Whatever name, this is a file I created. It doesn't exist there already. Apache does not know I created it. It's not watching what I do. So, 
I mean, you, you can't expect it to know what you meant. So if you put in your anchor, this is the name of the file. I mean, we know it worked because it, it all came together. I, I know the name of the file because number one, I created it. Number two, um, I'll show it to you in Windows Explorer. Number two, I know the name of the file. Well, that's the one. I can't do it that way. Because I'm looking right at it. That's the file I created. That's the name of the file. It's not some sort of name inside the file or some sort of text inside the file. This is the name of the file. And if I change this, watch. <laughs> okay. Let me come back to my browser. I know you know what's going to happen here. But let's see where I'm, I am. Um, I'm not on my local machine. So I got I to gotta open this on my local machine. How do I know? Because the domain is udel.edu. That's not my local machine. Right? I, I don't have that domain. So I'm going to show you how you can tell that too. It's possible for you to create HTML files on your local machine and open them up. It's just that it won't serve to other people. So let me open this. Uh, no, this way, this way. All right, open this back up. Um, I want to open up index.html. Chrome. Okay, so is that showing, I hope? For some reason, oh, I know why, because I didn't select the browser. Okay, now, now look at my URL. Especially the left-hand side of this thing. So it begins with C colon forward slash. This is a Windows machine, right? You could tell. If it was, if this was Copeland we were talking to here that we're viewing this page on, it would read udel.edu slash uh, tilde username, right? But this is not. This is this is Windows, and we know from the forward slashes too. <laughs> Windows uses forward slashes instead of backslashes. No, wait a minute. No, no. This is. Sorry, I I, I misspoke there. Inside the web browser, everybody uses forward slashes. See, it's only in Windows native directory structure that Windows uses backslashes. Everywhere else on the planet, everyone uses forward slashes. All right, so there's that page of my local index. We modified something. We changed one of those file names. It wasn't that one. Which one did we change? Or did I not save it? Oh, you know what it is? Because Windows is allowing it, I think. Um, so that, that may not have worked out well for us. See, it's a little funny like that because Windows uh, natively is not case sensitive. So we have a situation here, probably it's sys101, it was a sys101.html. Sys101. So I'm gonna do a control refresh and see if I can, uh, it's allowing it. The Unix machine will not allow that. So we see that Windows allowed me it's not, Windows is not case sensitive. I tell you how I can mess it up. I'm gonna change the name to Sys1011. So now it's not a case sensitivity problem, but it's mis, uh, the, the wrong characters are in it. And what do we get? File not found. 
All right? So I think that summary may help um, if I'm lucky here. It may help uh, tie everything together. So we've got windows that we're familiar with, Unix that we're learning. We see those directory structures are the same. The browser displays those directory structures in the same way as we see uh, with Windows. And then um, finally, that, that directory structure is displayed, well, as in the, in, in, in the, uh, in the browser URL. And you use that same directory structure for the anchor directions in, in the, uh, the, the href of the anchor tag. So these things are all tied together. They're all, and they're all the same. So hopefully, maybe that will help. I hope. If not, you'll let me know, I'm sure. <laughs> so let's call it quits on this video.